This is another Android Studio beginner tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to talk about the Android activity life cycle. So I'll pull up this page from the Android developer website. I just googled uh, like Android developer activity life cycle and we can click on this one right here from the developers website and there's just a little diagram here that's going to help me explain things a little better. So at like the beginner level there's not a lot that I think is really necessary to know about the activity life cycle. You just need to know that it exists and kind of the flow of things. So first off, what is the activity life cycle of an Android app? If you've ever been to a job interview for an Android position or looked at job postings for Android positions, they almost always mention the activity life cycle. You gotta know what the activity life cycle is and what the flow of it is. Basically, it's just a bunch of methods. They're override methods and they're called in a particular order when a new activity is created. So when, when you first create an activity, like when you first open your app, on, everybody knows that onCreate starts, right? Every your, your first bit of code is always written in onCreate. So I just created a new project, I called it Activity Lifecycle, and I have two activities. So I have main activity and I have a second Java class called Second Activity. You can write them out if you want, or you can just watch and I'll just kind of explain things here. So um, if you'll notice, all, all I've done is in the two layouts is in the one layout I created a button and uh, all this button is going to do is navigate to the new, a new activity which is the second activity and in second activities layout there's just a second button actually we don't even need this, it's not going to do anything, I can just get rid of it there's nothing there because we don't need anything there so we can close it and in main activity we create the button and um, then I create, put an on-click listener on the button and use an intent to navigate to the second activity. Just to show you the activity lifecycle starting, then switching to a new activity, and then back. So you'll notice these methods down here, which are the same ones that I showed you in that diagram. We have on create, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, on destroy, and on restart. To get these methods, all you would do is, here I'll just delete one of them. You press alt, insert, go to override methods, start typing so I deleted on start so we need to put that one back in and there we can just import the log the on start method and I just added a little a little log to each one of these just so it'll print to the Android monitor and we can see when they're actually being activated so if you don't know how to create a log just start typing log D and you can see log D start popping up hit enter and that's all I've done also at the top of the activity I created a tag if you don't know how to create a tag all you do start typing log t and you can see it pops up right there so we'll just hit enter and import the tag so I've done the exact same thing in the second activity basically all you need to do is copy all of these override methods go over to the second activity and then just paste them all in here if you're following along with me and then create a tag for second activity also and put a log for on create and that's it now we'll start our app and we're gonna check out the Android monitor and see when these methods are called Okay, we'll go over into the run tab just because it's, it's less busy and it'll be easier to see. So our activity has started here. Uh, I'm not sure why I don't see on create. Let's go back into, yeah, we have a tag for on create, so I'm not sure why we don't see that. Let's, uh, let's actually restart the app. Okay, there we go. So we have, you can see, ignore this, this was from the previous launch. So we can see on create starts, then we have on start, and then we have on resume, which is the order that we expect. We have on create, on start, on resume, and then our activity is running. So now let's go and navigate to our second screen and see what happens. So if I click this button, it'll take us to our second screen, and we can see main activity pauses, second activity on create method is executed, then on start, then on resume, and then we see main activity stopping. So we follow the flow from main activity, the activity was running, and then we navigated to a new activity, so on pause should be called, uh, where is that? on pause right here yeah so that's good then second then the new activity started on start was called on resume was called and then you can see main activity went to on stop so that's that follows the general flow of things and what you'll notice though is that main activity wasn't destroyed so main activity isn't actually going to get destroyed unless the phone decides that it needs those resources the activity life cycle is basically just a way for the device to manage its resources. It assigns priority. So like obviously an activity that's running has a very high priority, but an activity that's say in an on stop uh, mode, I guess you would call it, has a very low priority. 
So if the app suddenly needed more resources, that would be the one that would go first. If you had like a like a bunch of activities open, the app would automatically start closing down the ones that had low priority to uh, get resources to the places that it needs the resources. All right, so now let's press the back button and see what happens. So then we press back and we navigated back to main activity. And let's take a look here. So we have main activity was on stop when we navigated to the second screen. Then we hit the back button and we can see second activity gets paused, which is what we expect goes to on pause and then main activities on restart method gets executed so you can see because main activity was in on stop mode then we hit the back button so it follows this path here on restarts called then on start then on resume which is what we see here then second activities on stop method gets called just like it did when we first navigated away from main activity right here so we can see on stop gets called but the difference here is second activities on destroy gets called. And the reason for that is because we navigated back. If we would have used an intent to navigate to main activity, on destroy wouldn't have been called. It would have just paused. Or sorry, it would have just used on stop. So that's kind of all I wanted to go over. I just wanted to go over the activity lifecycle. And because this is a beginner series, you don't really need to know too much about it. Chances are in your apps, you're not going to be using these override methods at all. You might be using on resume uh, but it's unlikely basically that oh, the thing that you need to know is the activity lifecycle is a way for your device to manage its resources it's just a way to assign priority to activities and decide which ones need to be destroyed or which ones need to be kept alive or which ones need to have more resources given to them but android does everything automatically so there's pretty much nothing you need to worry about you just need to know kind of how it works if this video was helpful, don't forget to leave a like below. Follow me on Twitter for notifications when new tutorials are posted. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.